Now, what's happening in all the urban cities across America is that you've got a process in, in place right now in urban re in re redevelopment. They're using five techniques that totally wipe you out. One is called gentrification. They're going into all these major cities that used to be majority black population, populated cities, and they, they are erasing you in, in places like Detroit, Michigan, New York, Boston, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. used to be the chocolate city. When I went there with President Carter in 1976, at that time, Washington, D.C. was 78% black. Now it's down about 42% black. Wow. Chocolate city is gone. Detroit, Michigan is going to be totally wiped out by immigrants pouring into the society. In 19, since 1970 up to now, we've had 45 million immigrants coming to the United States. They came in over you, and they're displacing you. And then the second term they use besides gentrification to wipe you out is a thing they call privatization. You go into Detroit, Michigan, and as they gentrify, they're going to take all the public resources and things that should be owned by the public, they're going to place them through privatization to the hands of the wealthy whites. Whites are going to buy your golf courses, your subway systems, your bridges, your tunnels. They're going to, they're going to control your airports, your parks, your museums. Why? Again, because Anderson says, he who owns and controls the resources got the power. If you own and control nothing, you are totally, absolutely useless and expendable. And so, and what, and that's why we have nothing has changed for us because we don't understand the system of gentrification and privatization. The other thing they're using to wipe you out in those cities is called metropolitan forms of government. We're now they're going to do regional form of government, which means that the whites in the suburbs can come into those black cities and set up some kind of consortium that control what goes on inside those cities so they can take the, extract the resources out of them. Another concept they use in those cities is called cool cities which says cool cities mean bring in the gays and let them replace black folk. And so, and that, that's, the, that's the fourth scheme they use on you. And in Detroit, Michigan, using that as an example again, the governor there has always set up a, a movement, a system where he wants to go, into, go to the president of the United States, Obama, and ask him for a green card system where he can start importing Chinese from China to make, make Detroit, Michigan the biggest Chinatown in the United States even though that city had a 90% black population, they're going to bury blacks in Detroit, Michigan, underneath Asians coming into Detroit. And already in Detroit, Michigan, in Dearborn, right on the outskirts of Detroit, Arabs own 90%. 90% of all the businesses in the city of Detroit are owned by Arabs. Arabs and 90% black population must go, to a 90, must go to the Arabs to get what they want in terms of food, medicine, clothing, because they own all the, they own out of the gas station. You got 146 gas stations in Detroit, Michigan. Arabs now own 144 in a black city. Blacks own two gas stations out of 146. You own nothing. The rest, the hotels, are, are owned, and the 7-Elevens are owned by Indians. Asians are owning the, the, the laundries. The laundries. They're owning the hair and wig shops, the nail shops. Blacks own nothing in a 90% black city. And that's why now Detroit went into poverty. That's why it was declared bankrupt. Because blacks had money. They, blacks had about, a, about 11 or 12 million, billion dollar a year annual disposable uh, amount of money passing through their hands. They were going out to the suburbs, spending it in the suburbs, and spending it with the Arabs and the Asians, the Hispanics, and everybody else. And when I tried to put in a plan there for black folk, they said it was racist for me to try to help black folk. They said, yes, Dr. Anderson, we admit in this town that we have, a, we have an Asian town, a China town, a Pole town, a hockey town, a Cork town, a Mexican town, and a Greek town, but it's racist for you to try to do something for black folk, to build a black town. And guess what the black leadership said? They show sure is right. <laughs> and if you want to find out if I'm telling a lie or not, you got blacks sitting right in this, in this auditorium that was there. You got right here on the front row, two here, you got Rosie Milligan that was there and spoke in Detroit. And I had over a thousand blacks come across America and say, we will move and relocate our business to Detroit to build a black community, a black business district. We'll move our businesses into Detroit. Over a thousand of them. And guess what? The town got scared and fighting. And they, and they, and they sold up, told black folk, no, we don't, uh, it's racist to, to, for, for, for Anderson to come in and not include everybody and in everything. 
And so that ended that effort. And so that's why Detroit failed. So what I'm saying to you is anything that's happened to black folk in this country is can continue to happen, but it is not by accident. You all have to understand today that you are locked into a social construct. That social construct was put in place <laughs> almost 300 and 400 years ago. You are locked and boxed. You're locked and boxed. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you that nobody else tells you. You're locked and boxed because of the United States Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence. You're locked and boxed. We got black leaders can't figure that out. You go read the Constitution, it tells you straight up front what's going to happen to black folk. You're locked into it. That is a social construct that says in this country, in this country, that in the Constitution, which was approved in 1789, it says that this is a white nation. The first immigration law in, 19, in 1791, spell it out. It's a, it is a white nation for white Europeans and other white people classified as white. And black folk have, are now going to be a permanent underclass. Not a permanent underclass, they will be an underclass. You will be classified as three-fifths of a human being. You will be classified as property. You will be classified as property and three-fifths of a human being. You would not be permitted to do things that everybody else could be permitted to do. And in the Constitution, it's spelled out, and black folk don't know this, the people in New York, in, in Philadelphia, met for a whole week. They closed all the windows in 